custom built firewalls. There are so many options you can choose when custom building them. The options seem daunting. Now, for a lot of home users, we've frequently recommended this. For people who go, I don't want to have to deal with all this. I don't want to have to think about what hardware to choose. I really push a lot of people towards these small little neck gate boxes for a few hundred bucks. You can get the full features of PFSense and a nice little compact design. And for our business clients, we use a uh, these ones are some of the higher end models directly from NetGate because when it comes to our business clients and it comes to support, they can buy support contracts directly from NetGate on their hardware. They can replace it with the same exact model pretty easily or occasionally they're setting up an HA and they want two identical models and it's easy to swap those out. And we keep things on the shelf here for our local clients uh, for what we have installed. So if we ever have a catastrophe in a client, I can just grab their backup file, load it on one of these and have it ready and quickly get our clients back up and running. But custom build work. When we're doing labs, when people want to hire us, by the way, if you ever want to hire us, it's lawrencesystems.com. There's a button where you, at the top, a menu item where you can hire us. If you're interested, we do consulting services. Um, people sometimes want specific scenarios played out and we have some of our lab equipment for both those scenarios or just when I want to have fun and do some learning. And I do like playing with hardware. It is a lot of fun. But then the question comes, where do you get some of this? Well, honestly, eBay. Uh, this is an older model uh, right here of a super micro one U server that I'm going to talk about. And the reason I'm going to mention this is because I'm going to do a few videos up and coming that will involve this. And instead of me covering the details every time, I'll say I have a video and link to this video about the details of this particular box. Now going Intel, one of the things about FreeBSD, which is what FreeNAS and PFSense, two popular products I've covered on my channel quite a bit, they really favor the Intel network cards and the Intel based motherboards. Uh, they're just less problem. And if you're worried about things like Spectrum Meltdown and you're running native firewall on here, don't. That's not really a security risk that affects firewalls. That security risk does affect virtualization and you let someone uh, untrusted run applications that could potentially exploit that. That would be a risk factor. But for the most part, going Intel means wonderful compatibility, less headache and less troubleshooting. Same thing with going with the Intel cards. I have an Intel uh, NIC card here and a Intel uh, NIC card here. This one is the uh, Intel X520 DA2 10 gig SFP card. So good SFP card that will work in both uh, FreeNAS and PFSense here. Uh, it is well supported in the BSD world. And right here is the Intel OHM9JY. I'll leave links to these uh, in case you didn't hear what I said. Uh, this one works also great with PFSense and BSD. This is a four port uh, gig card. And then this has four onboard ports. So this little super micro, let's look over it real quick, has an Intel C2758. Uh, specifically, the board in here is an A1SRI2758F. And I'll leave a link to this as well so you can read through the specs on here. But this is the basic Intel 20 watt system on a chip, eight core, so reasonably low price. It does currently have, as configured right at this moment, 16 gigs of RAM in it, um, and a few SATA spots and the four network ports in the front, VGA in the front. The IPMI is older, uh, so I'm not going to dive into that. It's, uh, I believe it's all Java based. I haven't played with it in a little while, but I remember not liking it when I first started testing this box. But you can hunt these down sometimes at uh, everywhere from recyclers, if you're lucky enough to have one in your area, or sometimes deals on eBay, etc. And building with Intel means you're going to have the least amount of compatibility problems. Because a lot of people always ask me, so I want to build it myself, but what do I need? And honestly, is even though this is a smaller eight core, doesn't score very high on CPU mark or anything like that uh, processor, this will have no problems routing at gigabit. Even if you turn on things like IDS, it shouldn't really have for the most part, any issues routing at gigabit. It does not take a super powerful computer to have uh, routing done. And combine that with a good card like this one here, it supports all the different traffic shaping features and such uh, right on this card. Now, how did I get this in here? Let's go to the overhead and just kind of take a quick look at the board. So if you look at it from the top here, you see we have a little riser card. And once again, this is something that you can hunt down. I'll leave a link below where you can get this on Amazon if you have one of these boards. It happens to not have the riser card. When we got this, it didn't. It was all of about a $12 purchase on eBay to get this. Uh, we have just a couple hard drives in here. One has Untangle on it at the moment. The other one has PFSense because we've been doing some testing. This board runs Untangle fine. And uh, looking at the ports in the front, like I said, we have our four network ports, uh, serial console, and these are labeled one, two, three, four or uh, 3210 actually, because that way they line up with the ports that are available. Snap the card in, 
just like that. So now we have the card in and those ports line up to the same names that they uh, were given. I, actually, I think when we loaded on Tangle on this. Because we do a lot of lab experiments and things like that with hardware. And like I said, it's a lot of it is building it with the Intel hardware is the most trouble free. And someone's gonna point out that I built using some Chelsea cards with some of my other systems and they work. But for example, I've had some virtualization problems with those. They don't seem to pass through the virtualization as well. So it's one of the reasons I do recommend Intel. And there's a plethora of this old hardware and it's great to get started uh, by digging into this. This system is actually relatively quiet because it's passively cooled. They still make newer models of this particular setup that you can get from Supermicro. And they're nice, they have a uh, passively cooled uh, instead of being passively cooled, I should say, on the new ones I've seen, they have some plenums on there. Uh, but it's something to consider. I just wanted to do this quick overview of this particular setup right here because, like I said, I'm going to do some future videos on it. And sometimes virtualization is fun. It's great. But I want to do things on actual hardware and test it out, including testing out the different network cards. I was working on uh, some ideas for a 10 gig PF Sense video because also as lightweight as the system is, it actually has the routing capability, not necessarily intrusion detection capability, but routing at 10 gig with this card in there. So it's pretty amazing. It doesn't take a ton of horsepower to do the routing on uh, these type of systems. But I'll I'll leave the part numbers on this. I can't leave you any affiliate links, and I, but I can leave you a little Amazon link for the riser card. But this question has come up a lot because it's been in the back of my rack there, and it is a box that we we have used to uh, play out some different scenarios. We've used it for some packet sniffing to bridge these across and do transparent bridging on. I've done some testing with it. I, in, I know not everyone has, like I have uh, three different NetGate boxes in stock, but these are also so we can play out scenarios to clients go, hey, we're integrating this into our whole network and we want this set up. The same thing with I've reviewed some of the Unify switches that we keep in stock for the same reason. They're just stuff we have in our lab. And it's important to you know build your lab out and be able to do these experiments and constantly do learning, even though I've been in business for 17 years and I've been working in tech now for 25, now that's the year 2020, I never stop learning. That's one of the keys to all this. All the, the, I take the accumulation of knowledge I've had playing with these over the years, and I still apply that to come up with other experiments and learn how uh, some of the networking works. Because you know I still like to have those aha moments or uh, try a new scenario that I haven't tried before and build it out and see how it works and testing it out in different hardware. I also had some plans to do some uh, free NAS videos with this box because it does have six SATAs. This particular case obviously is not going to be very friendly in terms of uh, mounting hard drive, so it'll probably just be sitting outside, but it's a good setup once again for doing something like free NAS. I know you can use AMD, a lot of people pointing this out, that it works, but there are small issues occasionally and hiccups you run into with the new Ryzen's because they're so new. And I encourage people who would like to or put the time in to start with some of those AMD systems because if you do work with the development teams that develop like the kernel developers and such and do file really uh, detailed bug reports that does help those kernel developers quash those bugs so uh, we have greater compatibility and sometimes I may take the time to do that. But for the most part, uh, if I just am focused on building out the lab servers, going with these older Intel systems is pretty good solid choice when you're picking out hardware. So if you're looking for um, one of these, if you type in the Supermicro and 1U and you're looking at something that can do really fast routing because you happen to have gigabit internet at home, uh, this basic little setup will get the job done. If you're a business, I don't recommend necessarily custom building it. If you rely on it critically, um, step up to these. Now, one nice thing is if you build your PFSense config in this and you start out all your learning on it, and then you decide later to move to one of these, the XML files uh, will cross over from here into a uh, genuine NetGate device and vice versa. If you started with some small NetGate device and you're like, I happen to be have been given this wonderful server, uh, it will move back over to here as well. So you can take and move that back and forth. You can take the configs and change them. The only thing to very much note is especially with these two particular top boxes and of course the 7100, they all have their own built-in switches. So you do have to be careful on how you export some of the configs uh, because the switch config stuff has nowhere to land over here. Uh, so you will, uh, you may run some compatibility problems and you will have to do some realignment as I may call it because of the network interface names are going to change from box to box if they're not using Intel. Um, you may have to do a realignment of which one's WAN, LAN, or any of the optional networks that you've created in addition to. But happy experimenting. I always encourage, as I know there's a lot of people that are uh, building out their home labs and I've helped them get started, which I think is amazing. I like encouraging more and more people to get into technology. And uh, so I just wanted to throw this out there about this particular box. Um, I don't 
tell you absolutely don't buy other cards, but if you want the most compatibility, I'll leave links to these two cards. They're relatively inexpensive that you can find them on eBay, and uh, they're going to cause you the least amount of grief, because if you're just getting started, starting out with a bunch of weird and compatible stuff will maybe help your learning experience, maybe turn you off to it. I'm not sure. Depends just on what level of determination you have, but at least I'll warn you ahead of time. That could be where some of the problems are, as I get those messages a lot or see people posting, I bought this one-off card and it doesn't work, and you'll want, you'll see why a lot of people say if you're a noob to this, start out with Intel. If you're willing to put some time in and learn a little bit more, go ahead and go with some of the non-Intel cards. All right, thanks. And thank you for making it to the end of the video. If you like this video, please give it a thumbs up. If you'd like to see more content from the channel, hit the subscribe button and hit the bell icon if you like YouTube to notify you when new videos come out. If you'd like to hire us, head over to lawrencesystems.com, fill out our contact page, and let us know what we can help you with and what projects you'd like us to work together on. If you want to carry on the discussion, head over to forums.lawrencesystems.com where we can carry on the discussion about this video, other videos, or other tech topics in general, even suggestions for new videos. They're accepted right there on our forums, which are free. Also, if you'd like to help the channel out in other ways, head over to our affiliate page. We have a lot of great tech offers for you. And once again, thanks for watching and see you next time.